Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to dive into getting our electric choke put on our carburetor here. This is a 1405, uh, I believe it's 600 CFM. It comes with a manual choke. I've had um, it hooked up. It's been working pretty decently. Obviously the limiting factor of the manual choke is you have to be in there to, to step it down. And so we're gonna upgrade to our electric choke. Um, I've been looking at uh, there's a couple videos on YouTube and then the instructions are pretty decent, but I'll show you what we need to do here. Um, first of all, this, ga this bracket's not gonna be necessary anymore. So we're gonna remove that and put the screw back in. It does take a different shaft. The one video, the guy says you don't need to do that, but there, it is a different numbered uh, bracket right there in the end. This thing, there's a uh, different numbers. I'm sure it has different angle, different geometry to it to accept the electric choke type of deal. Um, and then of course we'll be bolting it to the, these brackets here. This right here is a brass plug you'll have to remove. Um, and on the back side of the choke housing is a O-ring because that supplies the vacuum to pull the choke off. So that's kind of cool. I never knew what that was until I just thought about it. So we're gonna put a new shaft in. We're gonna change this. And then of course we're gonna install the housing, hook everything up, um, install the cap, you know, make sure everything's operating power it luckily this thing came with an electric choke from the factory so i have a what should be a good power source here will ground to itself and then we'll be able to start this bad chicken um we'll first of all set our base timing because in the previous video or i'm not sure how i'll post all these i re-stabbed the distributor to line up with number one at top dead center now it seemed to have been a tooth off. I did have to move the engine actually to zero. So it's not inconclusive if it was or not. So I'll be able to, once I, so now I know mechanically it's in time. If I go and to set the timing and for some reason I still have to go 27 degrees, that means I have a, uh, an issue in my distributor and something's going on there. I don't think there's an issue there, but it wasn't, it wasn't inconclusive or it wasn't conclusive because I had the engine at about five degrees before top dead center, I think, which isn't that much. Um, but it was there cause I wasn't exactly sure where zero was, which is right at the top of, you know, number one, top dead center. Um, and so when I took the, pulled the cap off and looked at the rotor, you know, I don't know where it would, I don't know where it would have been pointing, if you know what I mean, before I pulled it out. All I know is when I put it back in, it's in time. So we'll, long story short, figure that out. And we did the compression test, so we know my engine is good. So here we are. I think I'm just gonna put it on a time lapse and kind of go to town on this this thing, um, mainly because I want to listen to something while I'm doing this and. I'll go through it enough to where you guys actually get the value. If you are actually doing this and you want to know exactly how, I'll still break it down. But I kind of did just right there in the beginning. Most of what we're dealing with is, in fact, everything we're dealing with is here. And then we got our wires here, but everything we need is here. Instructions are very detailed. You kind of got to go back and forth and stuff. Let me get my washer here. The only thing I don't like is how loose this is. I'm sure this is going to line up with the carb housing, but it just doesn't really, you know, this the looseness. I hope it tightens up and it's not going to be flopping around. Not a big deal, but so yeah, this is a 14 555 bracket. And on this other side is you may not see it. Uh, well, so whatever number that is, it ain't a 14555. So anyway, 
Got to be a geometrical difference. So who knows? All right, on to the time lapse. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so first of all, let me just do this. Taking apart the uh, shaft, I slid the old shaft out, as you can see there. Took the bracket off. Um, this is hanging loose very carefully. One of the reasons they instruct to take the carburetor off is to limit you dropping things down, especially this uh, choke plate assembly to the throttle shaft anyways what I'm facing and I'm not gonna uh, put it in here just drop the bolt so with this shaft all the way through here there's a supplied washer but I can't get the washer on and still have room to slide the uh See this indent here. So the washer should slide just a bit past that indent. That way you don't have a lot of uh, you know back and forth issues. And what's going on, the reason why I need to do something is that this made it to that isn't the best connection. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't have a thinner washer, I am going to very carefully uh, smooth down this back side so I have more of this side protruding in. I'm going to do it very carefully. I really don't want to, to be honest with you. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunt around for another washer. But guys, I'm sorry, this is just not the best thing to film. As you can see, what I'm dealing with, there's two phases to this job. There's replacing this shaft and getting this um, installed correctly without a lot of slop and then you're going to install the housing hook it up make sure everything operates powered up so it's really three steps shaft housing and linkage and then power up and adjustment so i'm not going to film anymore just because this is not the best angle either if i could do up here and somehow mount things i hope to get a gopro at some point to make things better but Anyways, appreciate you guys watching. We will film a uh, finished product. All right, everybody, after a lot of work, what I ended up doing was just grinding down the washer um, that was supplied. Let's see here. It's this washer right in between this bracket. You see how thin it is? I, I, I said I was gonna grind down that side, which would have been difficult and stupid. So I just ground down the washer. The best thing to do is go to a parts store and just get a thinner washer. But a couple tries, I got it. Now this is this is tight. This is also a when you thread this into that new shaft, it's new thread, so you gotta you gotta really push it in there. And when you tighten it, um, just do not over tighten it at all. And really, that first tightening is kind of the kind of it. If you take this apart, you're want, gonna want to use Loctite. And then same with down here. We're able to successfully get that thing in there without it dropping down. That is also a once tightened, don't touch it sort of thing. Or if you do take that out, you want to put Loctite in there. Um, this seems to be good. I got it. I got the throttle um, basically um, fast idle right now, so this this has room to move. So this is technically holding it way over there. Um, so we still gotta make sure I got full full movement. That actually seems to be the the setting there. The trick is you put a credit card in there and it'll help you set it no matter what the temperature. But no matter what, you just wanna fiddle with it. Make sure your linkage is fully uh, operational. I do have a little bit of a spot that's wearing. I'm sure over time it'll get um, 
to be perfect. I didn't want any play and, and we're pretty good there. So as far as side to side, use a teeny bit more, part of the washer isn't completely even. So, but we're gonna um, make sure we apply our O-ring. We're gonna install that housing, hook up the linkage in the back side, and then hook up the, the cover and wire it in and then Test it, make sure it works, and then we can start it up and set our timing. And we'll be one step closer to getting this thing tuned up. Um, the plugs probably could use a replacement, but I also need to change the oil. I'm gonna change the fuel filter, air filter, and then once I get it warmed up, probably when I, I'll do it a little bit warmer. It's like zero degrees and below right now. I will start to go ahead and figure out how to calibrate this carburetor. Basically, we're gonna detune it a little bit because the carburetor that's on this little 305 is a little bit too much. Too much fuel. Here's our timing gun. And here is the rest of our kit. I would say the, sh the, excuse me, the shaft part was definitely, excuse me, the hardest part. Mainly, if you're gonna do it on the vehicle, you wanna make sure you don't lose any bolts down the throat and then of course making sure that you have the proper amount of slack here I don't know why it said install the, the washer and if it's too tight then you might need to uh, you know remove it but when I removed it it was way too loose too loose for me to like so got it figured out and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the new housing on and then I will go ahead and do an update. In the future, I will have some sort of a, as I work, because I know it's beneficial to see how exactly things are done, but balancing that guys and gals with actually getting these projects done, they are needed to get done, so. Anyways, over and out. Here's the back side of our instructions. And uh, here's the front side, in case you're watching this far and can pause it. Zoom in, over and out. All right, ladies and gents, as you can see, we are good to go. We got our choke housing installed with the little O-ring here. These are all self-tapping if you're, if you're drilling into a 1405 at least, which is this one. So you're gonna be tapping these, it's important not to over tighten them. You tighten them and snug them down. And then you want to check for free operation. This washer back here has some high spots. So it does, if it, if it turns, it can inhibit this. So if I run into any issues, but right now I've got it pretty, pretty dialed in. So of course, uh, the choke will be here. And the throttle's already set, so let's drop that down. So the choke will be putting tension there, right? Oh, hit the throttle to a determined spot. Choke will set. And then this will let go based on the amount of, um, obviously the temperature of the choke and uh, the vacuum pull off, I believe, which I'm not exactly sure about how this operates, but. We've got this part figured out. That was the hardest part. And now we're gonna install the housing. I'm excited to get this thing on electric choke. This is pretty cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our electric choke set up. I was able to splice into the OEM harness, key on, I had voltage, got the hooked up. Got the ground hooked up. Um, the, this is set, the leanest setting here, just actually to the, just to the right of the leanest setting. Um, well, maybe it should be there. Anyway, so there's specific instructions on the, uh, in the manual. You set it and then let it warm up and then you do something with it. There's also the credit card method and with the butterfly, but I'm just going to do it with the book says, hoping everything works and, and, and is operational, but I'm so excited about the next level, the carburetor. get back to electric choke. I think I have a choke light on the dash so I could replace the bulb. So I'll have a little choke 
uh, light going on. Um, let me know if I got a circuit failure going on in the future, but it's just the little things that <laughs> keep you going on a project. I gotta say, it looks mighty fine with that electric choke. I'm so glad to get rid of this manual choke. It was so gummy and so, I, I, I felt like I was bending something every time I um, engaged it, just because everything is so old and gummed up. But we'll see how this works though. We gotta make sure this is operational. Um, we gotta watch that washer on the inside edge of this. I probably will oil these joints just a little bit. Uh, run some carburetor, not necessarily carburetor cleaner, but kind of spray through the throat of that. And of course, next level on this whole setup would be to do an intake, get rid of this old HEI, get the uh, MSD set up, get some headers, dual exhaust, eventually do the heads. Shoot, at that point, we're dropping a 383 stroker in here, and <laughs> who knows, but. Thanks for coming along. Any questions at all on this project, let me know. There's a little bit of customization, it seems like, with everything, but um, just make sure you get it to work and work well. And I wish you well in 2020. All right, ladies and gents, I finally got everything hooked up. I'll do another video explaining what I did here at the grocery store, taking it for a test drive. I, uh, Something's still up with the timing. I think I think I got tons of slack on my timing chain. I have no idea. But I still have had to set it to 27 degrees before top dead center in order for it to run correctly. So I'm wondering if the distributor has some parts internally that's causing it to mess up. So we'll see. Choke seems to be working great. It runs, it runs so much better. I cleaned up the spark plugs, replaced the air filter, changed the oil. So I'm thinking it was just so deadened with all three of those before. Plus, I cleaned up the spark plugs and it stumbled a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a stumble a little bit. So it might be a little rich with the idle mixture, but uh, I'll probably lean that out a little bit. Who knows, this is really a seat of the pants thing, so I just wanted to do a quick little recording. I know it's terrible, um, but my choke light still stays on because on this model, it's integral with the oil pressure switch. And what that was, was a choke heater element to help the choke, so I don't know. It's crazy 80s emission stuff. I'm gonna head into cars, maybe I'll film in there and see, y'all can help me pick out a steak. Ha, 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 ha.